in general, it's reported about 75 to 80% of dogs are controlled with a really good quality of life and an average median survival time of about one year. Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. As promised, I wanted to give you a quick summary on transitional cell carcinoma, bladder cancer in the dogs in terms of treatment and prognosis. But I wanna remind you, I have two other vlogs where we really have gone through a lot of the information. So be sure to check out the first one where we talked about uh, screening early detection. This is a treatable cancer, but again, I would really like to see us be able to improve these numbers with early cancer detection. So please be sure to watch that video as well. In part two, we talked about the different diagnostics that you may be discussing with your veterinarian or your cancer specialist. So be sure to watch that. And I talked about the BRAF mutation test, which can be used not only for diagnosis, but I will use as a monitoring test for my patients as they're going through treatment. So in this video, I want to cover a couple of the main treatment options. And I touched on this in the last video as well. So I'm going to try to keep this brief, be bright, and then let's be done. Okay. So the first one is just remember this is a cancer that is locally aggressive, so it's often very invasive into the bladder. And again, one of the problems, as I've been harping on, is that we often find this you know, late in the course of disease. So I'd like to be finding this earlier. And it has significant metastatic potential. So we find that about 15 to 20% of patients will have spread at diagnosis, either to the local lymph nodes or distantly. So you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that you include chest X-rays an ultrasound as part of your testing done at diagnosis and then as you're going through treatment. Um, and that is why with treatment, we're going to talk about surgery and then chemotherapy afterwards. As I mentioned in the last video, most of these cancers in dogs are typically in a non-surgical area. If it's in the surgical area, like the apex of the bladder, we definitely are going to recommend surgery but many of these cases are in a part of the bladder where we can't get complete margins or they're in the trigone, which it just makes it impossible because of the plumbing. With surgery alone, the median survival times are reported to be about three, three and a half months. And again, that's often because these cancers will grow back and or metastasize. So an, often what we say medical management is going to be super important to treating these cases. One of the things that you could consider it's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. There's different NSAIDs on the market, but the first one that was a lot of the studies were done is paroxicam, but there's newer, newer ones available, but there's Rimadil, which is carprofen, Medicam, Deramax has been looked at, um, Galaprant is a newer one, um, Prevacox. So you're only going to do one at a time, uh, but these are non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. So not only are they pain medications and anti-inflammatories, but we believe that the inhibition of something called COX, uh, which is part of the inflammation cascade, that inhibiting that can have an anti-cancer property. So usually pets that just get a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory uh, get about six to seven months, which is great. Your veterinarian or your specialist is going to talk to you about some of the side effects, kidney side effects, liver side effects, making sure they don't have GI irritation and the different monitoring, how often your pet will need blood work and monitoring on that. So that would be an option if you decided against chemotherapy. But chemotherapy is usually what we're going to do. Usually I'm gonna combine a non steroidal anti-inflammatory with chemotherapy. Because many of these cancers are found late in the course of disease, chemotherapy is usually not curative. It would be lovely, wonderful, if we could get patients into remission. And I have gotten patients into remission, so I'm not saying that's not possible. But many patients will have complete remissions or partial remissions or even stable disease with quality of life. So there's symptoms that we talked about in the first video. So the straining to urinate, the frequent urination, the painful urination improves. So they have really good quality of life. 
often we'll do sequential protocols. So we'll start with one of the different effective chemotherapy drugs. And then when they get resistant, we'll try another chemotherapy drug and use that till they get resistant. And now I used to just monitor with ultrasound, but now we can use the BRAF mutation test that I talked about in the last video to help us monitor more objectively because it's giving me a percentage, a score that I can track. So I'll often do chemotherapy with the COX inhibitor, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. In general, how are, is my pet going to do? In general, it's reported about 75 to 80% of dogs are controlled with a really good quality of life and an average median survival time of about one year. I've had some dogs progress in six months. I've had some dogs go two to three years with a really good quality of life. Different chemotherapy Drugs that your oncologist, your veterinarian may talk to you about, mitoxantrone, vimblastine, you know, with a non steroidal anti-inflammatory, and then recently chlorambacil, an oral drug also known as Leucaran, metronomic chemotherapy has been shown. There are other chemotherapy drugs, carboplatin, doxorubicin, that have been shown to be effective as well, but these are some of the different chemotherapy protocols. So that is my little chemotherapy snapshot, you know, overview. Uh, radiation is sometimes used. There are going to be some cases where you may, um, if, you know, these pets can be completely or partially obstructed, you may need stents or things like that. So this is not all, all inclusive, but I'm giving you a general overview overview of the different treatment options. A lot of this will apply for dogs with prostatic urethral trans transitional cell carcinoma as well. So I hope that was a good overview for you. Go back and watch the whole series. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and I look forward to seeing you at the next video.